Le brica la baba le brica. Rida la brasi costo branda la braya. Le brica sa anything le brida the son of God la baya. I remove it le braya. I remove in the name of Jesus every secret operation of Satan over our understanding and our minds. I paralyze it. Le brida I paralyze the spirit of dullness of perception. I paralyze the spirit of slowness to understand. I paralyze the spirit of indifference. Indifference, kebakataya. Indifference, kabataya. Indifference, libra. I paralyze that spirit. I paralyze that spirit. The spirit of indifference, kabataya. Indifference, labaya. That regardless of the teaching, libra. Our position does not change. Our attitude towards things, certain things does not change. It remains the same. I paralyze that attitude. I paralyze it. I paralyze any limiting attitude in our minds. I paralyze it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I cause the light of the gospel to shine, to shine, to shine, more light, more light, more light, more light, more light. Libre kaya, libre that will come out, libre kaya, and not just be libre kaya, laid back, libre kaya, will be active, active participants, kebaya, active participants, active participants in the things of God. Riso to braya, in the name of Jesus, kabada braya, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory, 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 glory. Well, welcome to Full Gospel Church International, the London branch, our daily teaching devotional, Epignosis Online or Epignosis Daily. And of course, Believers Bible Study Fellowship. Believers Bible Study Fellowship with myself, with myself, Reverend Fred Abeka and lady patients and all 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 the amazing leaders of this amazing 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 ministry we give you the praise and we give god the glory in that regard hallelujah all right i'm excited i'm excited i'm excited i'm excited for today and my prayer is that you know what we're going to do today what we're going to start today what we're going to what we're going to this journey we're going to begin on a brand new series will 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 really bear volume with us and we will really take it as it were to the ends of the earth to the ends of the earth praise god praise god all right all right so let's get into this and begin to travel in today's teaching let's get into this well i i'm so excited about this now praise god so here we are hooray spiritual growth in christ season two Whoa. so we are back to our spiritual growth in season two season two of spiritual growth and our emphasis for this this season will be becoming conscious becoming conscious of our walk in christ that is our emphasis becoming conscious of our walk in christ no more being careless so we want to examine certain areas of the christian walk in this season two of spiritual growth being conscious see not just you know coming to church going coming to teach teaching devotional going not just praying and just going not just not just doing it just for doing sake not just doing it just for doing sake because if i if i don't do it i will not be seen so i need to do it you know no 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 that that's not what that's not what we are aiming at we are not doing this thing for doing sake you know we are not just marking register we are not just doing it for the we want to be conscious intentionally conscious of certain areas of our christian work that's the aim of this season too. Intentionally conscious of certain areas of our Christian work. Very, very important. Very. Otherwise, we will let it slip. Otherwise, certain areas will be strong, but certain areas will be weak. Certain areas will be weak. Certain areas will be strong. So we need to get the balance right. We need to get the balance right. Like, for example, as we go through, you will see the areas that we need to be very, 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 very conscious of in that regard. So let us take Philemon chapter one and verse number six to begin this new season 
of spiritual growth, season two. Philemon of Philemon 1 6. And I pray that the participation in and sharing of your faith may produce and promote full recognition, may produce and promote full appreciation, may produce and promote full understanding. So, three things in there that Apostle Paul hoped that this gentleman, Philemon, will cultivate as well as other believers in spiritual growth. One, you come to that place that you fully recognize. You come to that place that you fully appreciate. You come to that place that you fully understand. So that, he said, your participation in and sharing your faith, your participation as a believer, the things you participate in, teaching, prayer, church service, evangelism, whatever we participate in, it must produce. The aim of it is that each day, day in and day out, our recognition, what we, what we, we will be aware of. And once we are aware of it, we begin to appreciate it. Then it's based on understanding. What, what area of understanding? Precise knowledge of every good thing that is ours already in our identification with Christ. So what Paul was telling Philemon was that the believer has received so many things in their spirit. And consequently, that they will receive in their spirit must allow them to now participate. 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 That is the, that's the key word there. See that? He look, at, look at It's a prayer. And I pray that the participation and sharing See that so he doesn't want anybody to be idle in the house of God. You must participate. The level of your participation, your involvement, right, will be dependent on the accurate information you have of those areas of your Christian work, so that no aspect of the Christian work suffers. For those that have just joined us. We are on here now. We are on a brand new series, Spiritual Growth in Christ, Season 2. And our emphasis for this Season 2 is becoming conscious. That means it's an intentional consciousness of our work in Christ. Just like we are all conscious that tomorrow I will go to work. So because you know that tomorrow you will go to work, you prepare for some people because where they work is far, they cook food today. They cook food. You take a plastic, you bag it, you wrap it, you put fork and knife or spoon in it. You add some fruits, you add maybe yogurt, you wrap it. When you, the food cools down, you put it in the fridge. You anticipate. Then also the clothes you wear, you put it in the washing machine or you wash it. When it dries, you iron it in anticipation. There are some people even, they have ironed all their clothes for the week. They have, they have made all plans for the week. And that is good and fine. What does it mean? You are conscious. Why are you conscious? Because you recognize that you are a very important member or you play a role in your work. So all your planning is around your work. If somebody were to invite you to a certain place, the first thing you look at is what? Your work rotor. Am I, am I, am I, am I communicating at all? You look at your work rotor. Oh, on Saturday, there is a wedding. Then you look at your work rotor. Um, okay, I am not sure I'll make it. I will try. See that. And some of you, even your rota is most of the time, some companies do one week rota, some do two weekly rota, some do one month rota, some do three months rota, some do six months rota down there. So you already know in advance, right? And then you plan. 
So if, for example, there was an event at work and you did not show up, there will be no excuse to your line manager to say, oh, I forgot. I did not know. It escaped my mind. You will never do that because you know that if you do that, it will cost you your work. It will cost you your salary and other things. It will have what? A knocking effect on other things like maybe rent. It will have a knocking effect on the food you need, your groceries. It will have a knocking effect on your transportation. If you go by car, your petrol, or you go by public transport, your tickets. See that now? Can you see the effect? So when it comes to the area of work, look at how we are very, 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 very studious and diligent. Now that attitude is the same because your whole life depends on your work for sustenance. So you plan. Even when your family is telling you, come to this family engagement, you say, no, 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 no. I can't because on Friday, I am on afternoon shift. And no matter how your parents, your family that gave birth to you and you've lived it all your life will try and let you come, you will what? You will forfeit the family meeting for the work. That means that the work is more important to you at that time than a family meeting. Because in your mind, if I go to the family meeting, will not pay for my work, the hours I spend. Because it's that money that I need to live life and to exchange goods and services on planet Earth. I hope I'm communicating. So when, when Philemon uh, talks about that, that is our thing we want to deal with in this season, being conscious. Consciousness is a sign that you take something serious or not. Consciousness is a sign. Now, there might be other things that we call them mitigating circumstances. Some things sometimes are not possible. That's fine. That's what we are talking about. But we are saying that in this area of becoming conscious in our work with Christ, in this introduction, if the thing keeps on repeating itself, you know, I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, okay, sometimes, but for almost about six months to one year, you know, that area of your Christian life has suffered. Then it means one, Either you are not conscious of that area or two, that area is not important to you. You don't see why that is important. And that's why we want to look at certain areas of the Christian work in this season too, so that it does not suffer. That's why Paul prayed to Philemon. He said, I pray that the participation, your involvement in this work of faith, it should produce it should produce something. It should promote something. It should show that you recognize that it's important. It should show that you recognize that you appreciate it. You recognize that you understand it. So when that area of consciousness is not there, that is why you can't participate. You can't participate because you, are, you really don't think it is important. You cannot, you cannot also share because you think it's not important. You cannot produce, you cannot promote because you don't see the importance. And all that is what? It's linked to this next sentence here, why? Because of precise knowledge, accurate. Now, accurate knowledge in what? In what we have in Christ. So here it is not, it's not a touch and go, it's not, a one-off. It's not, oh, yeah, I know. No. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 4 to 5. We have started a brand new series, Spiritual Growth, Season 2, Being Conscious of Our Work in Christ. Being conscious of our work. That's, that's what we are dealing with. Being alert, being aware that one area does not suffer or one area is not, it doesn't look like it's not important. Look at 2 Corinthians 13, 4 to 5. For though he, Jesus, was crucified in weakness, yet he goes on living by the power of God. And though we too are weak in him, as he was humanly weak, that means he's talking about limitations when you live on planet Earth, the constraint of time, the constraint of of, of distance, the constraint of matter. 
Yet in dealing with you, we shall show ourselves alive and strong. Look at that. In fellowship with him. See? In fellowship. In fellowship. In relationship. In communion with him. He's saying that, yes, all of us, we do have limitations. Like when Jesus was on planet Earth, he could not be everywhere at the same time. Because when you are in this body, you are limited by time. You are limited by space. You are limited by matter. But that does not give me the excuse because I am limited by time. I am limited by space. I am limited by matter. So I will not be vibrant. So Paul is talking about being vibrant, being conscious that no aspect of your Christian work suffered. Just like in your work, you make sure that no area of your work, they will find fault with you. You try to be on time. You try to do your work correctly. You try to follow GDPR. You know, you try to follow the rules of the company. You want to be in the company's good books. So you are very circumspect. You are always watching around. You are always watching around. Am I late? Am I doing the work well? Am I, am I, do I, do I overrun my break time? You know, am I, am I always on time? Am I, you are always conscious. You are always conscious. You don't, you don't go to work early, but your, your, your approach to working is all shabby. No, you don't do that. You, you go to work early, you're on time. Your work is well done. All that you are required, you do it exactly on time. So it means that what? You are alert. And he's saying that the same thing. You cannot afford to be, to be casual in your work. Because whereby you are strong in prayer, but you are not strong in Bible study. You are strong in Bible study, but you are not strong in prayer. You are strong in prayer. You are alert in prayer. You are alert in the word. But when it comes to church service, you are not alert. You are alert in church service, but when it comes to the word, you are not alert. You are alert in church word study. You are alert in prayer, but you are alert in coming to church, but you are not alert in walking in love. You know epignosis, but your walking in love is virtually non-existent. You are rude. You, you know, you don't, you don't show exhibit the love of God. There's no kindness, you know, no, no desire. Evangel so he's saying that we show ourselves strong. Verse number five, very important. Examine and test and evaluate your own self. Doesn't that sound very, very corporate? Huh? In work, don't they do, don't they do review? What is the aim of the review at church, at, at work? Is it, is it to suck you? No. They want to see whether the same intensity, seriousness, concentration that you use to come to work, that that same intensity does not suffer. Why? Because if we are 50 people in an office, and out of the 50 people, even one person does not pull their weight, it will affect the output of that office or that work or that department. Have you noticed that? So that's why they do review. Some people, it's weekly review, monthly review, quarterly review. The boss is not trying to sack you. He's trying to make sure that we are all pulling our weight so that the general vision of the company and the general output of the company does not fail. So here Paul is saying the same way, the same way, examine, test, and evaluate your own self, examine. That means you have to research, check yourself to see whether, to see, to see whether you are holding to your faith and showing proper fruits of it. So I want to be clear in this area. This is not about whether you will lose salvation or you lose your salvation or no, 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 no. Look at the sentence well in the verse five. Look at it here. Look at the look at look at the verb form here. Examine, test, evaluate. What is that? Command, command, command. It's, it's what we call the imperative tense. Command, which means that he's talking about the area of what your response or attitude. Your attitude is not born again. Your attitude is not born again. Your spirit is born again, but your attitude and your emotions and your will, they are not born again. So that is 
my responsibility and your responsibility based on the knowledge I receive. He said, examine, test, evaluate your own selves to see whether you are holding to your faith. It's a command. Ask yourself, my prayer life, is it, is it in form? My word life, my attitude life, my church life, am I praying? But when it comes to church service, I am absent. Am I going to church, but I am not involved? Am I, am I, am I praying, having the word, going to church, but I don't have any love? I'm not operating in love. See that now? These are what he's talking about. He's not saying you lose your salvation, but there's a reason for that. And that is why we we'll do this, this new, brand new series, Spiritual Growth. So we are focusing more on the area of our attitude and also our emotions and our mind based on the knowledge we have received, what are we doing with it? He said, to see whether you are holding to your faith and showing the proper fruits of it. Test and prove yourselves, uh, not Christ. Do you not yourselves realize and know thoroughly by an ever increasing experience that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless you are counterfeit, disapproved, on trial and rejected. Here he's not talking about rejection as you are rejected, as you, you, are, you are losing your salvation. No, he's saying that what he's saying here is that if you do that constant self-evaluation, he's not saying that because of that, God will not accept you. God is not pleased with you. We know that already by spirit revelation of the born again man, but he's saying that now let that be your focus, not because you will miss heaven, not because God will not accept you, not because you are not born again, not because you might lose your salvation. That is not what he's talking about. But he's talking about to take advantage of so no part of your work suffers. Why? We'll come to that. Evaluate. Evaluate. You must make that evaluation constantly. We do that with our work. We do that with our relationships. We do that with the foods we eat, the clothes we wear. We, call, we are always evaluating. Look at Ephesians 5, 15 to 18. We have started a brand new spirit subject, spiritual growth, season number two. We did season number one last year. And our focus is being conscious of our work in Christ, being conscious of certain areas of our work that they do, it doesn't suffer or it doesn't fall behind. Ephesians 5, 15 to 18. This is just the introduction. The introduction. Look carefully then how you walk. That's the word there. Now, this word walk is from a Greek word, peripateo. Peripateo. Peri. To a particular specific purpose. Pateo. Within a specified boundary. He said, look carefully then how you walk. So let me get, now, once again, I don't have anybody in mind. So please, when I give examples, I want to be very clear on that. I walk in love always, so I don't have anybody in mind. I'm, I'm teaching to the body of Christ, including myself. So when I say certain things, don't think that I've, I've singled somebody out and I am, I'm, I'm trying to attack you. No. We are learning. If you take it the wrong way, that means that you are not growing. I am not attacking anybody. That I want it to be clear from the beginning. The examples I give, sometimes they just come off on top of my head. But I'm here to make a point. Now, watch it. He said, look then carefully how you walk. The word walk is peripateo. According to a particular, within a certain boundary. Please, this is not talking about you will lose your salvation. We are dealing now with salvation of our mind, our will, our attitudes, and our emotions. That's what we are dealing with now as believers. He said, look, Kemla, you work. Why? Because one part can suffer. It's possible to, be, to, be, to have all the things you are doing prayer, but for example, your church life, your church service life is suffering, or you are good at coming out to church, but your prayer life is not, is not growing, or your word life is not growing, or your walking in love is not growing. 
of what of what benefit to anybody that you know epignosis, you know the accurate word of God, but you your walk your walking in love is not existent. You are not patient with people. You talk anyhow. You use foul language. You ins- I mean, what what of what use is that? Upon all the epignosis, it will not help anybody. So look carefully then how you walk. Live purposefully and worthily and accurately, not as the unwise and witless. What does the unwise and witless do? That means there are some Christians who are like that. They, they, they live no purpose. No purpose in the, which area? In the area of their work in Christ. See, they don't see how that is, that any, all the aspects are important. Prayer, they have no plan. Word, no plan. Church service, zero. Walking in love, zero. Now, they don't, they don't have any aim to grow in those areas. He said that, walk, look carefully. Carefully. Verse 16, making the very most of the time. That means that, yes, we all have time to ourselves, but there are some periods of time you can use that to grow. Maybe that was not part of your agenda before you got to know some of these things. But what will you do? For example, I've got eight hours on my hand. Then as a believer that I have no this knowledge, I will spend the remaining eight hours or seven hours on social media. And not that I'm using the social media for anything. I am just having fun on social media. You know, that's a place for that. I'm not, not knocking that. But if I am matured in God, I realize that no, my priority is the things of the spirit. So I will give two hours to maybe word study and prayer. Then maybe the remaining four hours, I'll go to social media. One hour, I'll excite. One hour, I'll just chill. But if I'm a believer who have understood all these things, but I spend more on social media and only 15, 30 minutes in the things of the spirit, then he says we are not being wise. We are not making most of the time because we are believers. Take inventory of your time. When you take inventory of a time, you know where the time went. You will see where your time is going. And I'm glad that Apple iPhone has got a feature like that. Anywhere you go, there is a metrics that show you where you spend most of your time. You spend most of your time on Facebook or social media, it will show you. You see social media, seven hours. Then maybe something useful, 30 minutes. That's not good. That's not good as a believer. That's why he said that you must focus. See, verse 17, he said what? Why? Making the very most of every time, buy up each apology because the days of evil. When in our world today, it's telling us, oh, you know, let's blow time. Let's blow time. In other words, hey, I've got enough time on my hands. Hey, let me sit around and blow time. You know, he said that make the most of the time. He's not saying that be in the Bible 24 7. He's not saying that be in prayer 24 7. He's not saying that be listening to. Ep- no, 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 no. What he's saying that make the most. Make the most. If you don't have time, then you have created that position. Because everybody has got a finite 24 hours. Definitely there's some free time. If you like, check yourself and see, make an inventory. You see that there are some things that steal your time. They are of no necessity. And one of them, if you are not very careful, is social media. Social media, if you are not careful. Now, there's nothing wrong to use social media for your business and your stuff and sometimes chat with friends. I'm not knocking that. I have a, I have a free time in social media as well. But I'm talking about you know, allowing that time to eat into where you have no boundary, no discipline. No discipline, no discipline. No discipline. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot stop the time. You cannot tell yourself social media two hours. It's enough. Let me get into the word. I'm talking about when you have not, you've not got time. I'm not talking about when you don't have time. You have time. You ask yourself. You ask yourself, where is the time gone to? Everybody has got some free time somewhere. Everybody has got it somewhere. So now you, your, 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 your recognition of how important spiritual things will do will show the priority of where I will fix word steady. See that? That's why I said it. Making the most, the very most of the time. Buying up each opportunity. Because why? The days are evil. Satan is not, Satan never takes a holiday. Have you noticed? Satan never takes a holiday. 
Demons never take a holiday. Activities of the world never take a holiday except Christmas 25th and New Year, or maybe sometimes Easter. But every day activity is going on 24 seven. So just as you have given our, we've given ourselves to those things, as a believer, then I must arm myself also with the thing that allows me to be able to hold or bear up against those evil days. He said, the days or the age that we are living in is full of evil already. 17, therefore, do not be vague. What is being vague? You don't have any specific targets. No target, spiritually speaking, no target. You don't have any time that you study the word. You don't have any personal time for prayer. You don't have any personal time to improve yourself in the things of the spirit. You, don't, you are not conscious of that. Anything goes. No format. No format. Now, I am not talking about being dogmatic. That's different. You have a format, but I'm flexible. For example, I know the time that I pray. I know the time that I study the word, but I'm flexible. So if something does not happen, it doesn't have a fine, but I make sure that I don't miss it. You know, what does it mean that even though I couldn't have my morning prayer or my morning teaching, then a free time came about nine o'clock or 10 o'clock at night. Then instead of going to my word, I prefer to give priority to social media. That is what I'm talking about. I prefer to give it to social media. Then social media will eat up the three hours of that time. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if I am going to grow spiritually, then I must, I must have the maturity to say, okay, I've got three hours free on my hands. One hour word, second hour prayer, one hour social media. That's what he's talking about. See, but you know, like to relax, I've got three hours on my mind, I'm relaxing. I'm just there. Uh, time, the time will teach you what to do. The time will teach you. All of a sudden, phone call will come. A long lost friend from nowhere, or somebody who just engage you in some useless conversation to steal your time. He said, therefore, do not be vague, thoughtless, foolish but understand and firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. As a believer, we are going somewhere. We have a target in us as having a spiritual life. We, we cannot afford to just live like a disco anyhow. No, 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 no. If I was an unbeliever, different question. If I was a baby Christian, different question. But now we are maturing and maturing. So I must begin to know what is priority? So you ask yourself, okay, I've got two hours on my hand. Can I use one hour at least to pray or can I use one hour at least to study the word? Fine. The other hour I'll use it for social media. That is what we are talking about. That's what we are talking about. That's why I said, and do not get drunk with wine for that is debauchery. So he's talking about excess. But look at that. But ever be or be be, that's the, the, the Greek. Be be, keep on being, keep on being. Did you see that? Yeah, keep on being. That's what the Greek says. But uh, keep on being filled, stirred, stimulated with the Holy Spirit as a lifestyle. Conscious of our work in Christ. Otherwise, one part will suffer. It's not like I've woken up in the morning, I've done my prayer, and I've come to epignosis. Uh -huh. Uh, I've come to pray, uh, finish. I have nothing more to do. The remaining 18 hours, you know, I go, yes, I'll go to work, I'll come, I'll do other things. Then I'm, I'm talking about you, yes, you have done your everything. I've done my everything. Surely there must be some free spot. That free spot is what I'm talking about. That now you must train yourself to take advantage of that free spot. That is what I'm talking about. I am not saying don't go on social media. Did you, did you hear me say that? I'm not saying that don't watch television. No, I'm not being legalistic. No, 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 no. I am talking about free spots. You know that you have got free 45 minutes. So if the work in Christ is of a priority order for me, my first inclination, bam, I'll take the word rather. I'll take the word rather. My first instinct, as a believer, first to grow spiritually, I will do something to enhance my spiritual life. I can pray, 
I can read the word, or I can read some gospel literature by E.W. Kenyon, Kenneth Hagin, some of my recordings, Devil Damina, Chris Onayinka, any of them, uh, or play some preaching from one of my recordings. You do something to enhance that life. That's why I said, be ever being filled. It's a continuous, be filled. Don't leave gaps. Don't leave gaps. Because you never stop eating. You never stop going to work. You never stop sleeping. You never stop having your bath. You never stop exercising. You never stop taking a stroke. Excellent, 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 excellent. So what about also now that you're a believer? I'm talking about that free spot. I'm not talking about you can't watch television, you can't play. No, 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 no. You can go to social media, watch television, play. Any, that's, your, that's, that is entirely, God is not angry about that. God does not judge you in that. But what I'm saying is that if we want to grow spiritually, then we need to be conscious of putting spiritual matters first as a believer. So if I get free spots, it does not need to be long. Hour, 45 minutes. The consistency is what I'm talking about. Even 30 minutes, cool. 30 minutes, cool. And don't do it like, uh -huh. as I've heard he's saying that, I'm a little bit Cut, I'll take that. Let me just do it 30 minutes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. How many minutes more left? 10 minutes. Yes. I'm just doing it quickly, quickly, so I can go back to my stuff of maybe chatting with my friend. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. How many minutes? Five minutes. How many minutes? Two minutes. Uh -huh. Yay, hey, 30 minutes gone. Yay. Okay, now, uh -huh. let me call down my friend. You know, no. Still, in that attitude, you are still not seeing the thing of the spirit as a priority. You are still, you are doing it just for doing sake. No. See, but ever be feel. That should be our priority. So let's look at our learning outcomes as for this introduction. What are we talking about? Let me go back to the topic for those who came in just now. Here we are. It's what we are dealing with now. Spiritual growth. Season in Christ. Season number two. And our emphasis in this series is becoming conscious of our work in Christ. We are going to look at certain areas of our work in Christ. So let's look at the areas we shall be dealing with. Our learning outcomes for this season's spiritual growth, season two. One, becoming conscious of our work in prayer. If you want to grow, your eye, he said that, be wise. That area should not never suffer. That area, upon all the 18 hours I have to myself, I am not being legalistic or dogmatic, but prayer should not suffer. As a believer, it is inconceivable that one week you have not had a personal prayer time. Every believer must have apart separate moments of prayer. Apart from the eight to nine we meet here, apart from the other meetings we have, you yourself, I myself, I must have personal prayer times, conscious of that work. I must be conscious also of evangelism. Ha, as for that one, hey, it goes for all of us. My, if I am not conscious of that area, I am not vibrant in Christ. I must, be, I must always be looking at ways where I can share the gospel to somebody, conscious, not a one-off. I must be conscious of our work towards eternal rewards in Christ. That is it. Many believers don't even have that. And we shall be dealing about that with the book of Revelation. That's what we shall deal with the book of Revelation in it. We have eternity in mind, though. Eternity in mind. Eternity in mind, there are rewards. Eternity. That's what Paul said that our labor in the Lord is not vain. What I mean that our labor in God is not about vain things. What are the vain things? Things that even though you have them, when Christ comes, they will not count. They will not count. When we stand before Christ, Christ will say, okay, they'll bring everything. Land, gone. Land. Land, land, land does not, is not, doesn't qualify for a reward. Land. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All the business connections, gone. It will not stand. All the accolades, it won't stand. It, can, it cannot attract eternal rewards. All the monies I made, it's only for planet Earth because there's a central bank that paid that 
regulated, not heaven. No, it's gone. All oh, the Lamborghinis. It doesn't, it doesn't attract eternal revenue. It's only good for planet Earth. So we are people with eternity in mind. Paul said, knowing of this, the love of God constrains us, compels us. When I do things, I don't do things because I, I mean, I'm doing it for name, but I have eternal rewards on my mind. Some of them might not be rewarding now. Now, it might not be rewarding. If your motive always is to get some fiscal benefit only, then we, have not, we are not conscious of this. So becoming conscious of the fact that there are eternal rewards and we deal within the book of Revelation. Also becoming conscious of our work as a church. We are a church. We are a body of Christ. And, and the, that area can also suffer. There are some believers, church service, uh, 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 uh. They are not involved. They think church, you know, then they say, oh, Jesus is everywhere. Jesus is everywhere. I don't need to go to church. They don't, they don't understand Bible. The Bible says that the church is the pillar and the foundation of truth. Church activity is very important. None of them is unimportant. All church activities. And one of the danger of online churches which have come in the world is the danger of being, being, being as a spectator. Now it has become like a reality show around the world, especially in Africa. Since the COVID came, you know, now church service has become like a spectacle. People log in, but they don't participate. They log in, they don't participate. They see the thing like a TV show. It can affect your spiritual growth. It can affect. So we need to be conscious of our work as church. Very important. Then we shall deal with becoming conscious of, of our work in forming godly habits. Godly habits. Very important. There are some things, there are no go areas. We're not dealing with legalism or, no, 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 no. There are some things, there are no go areas as a believer. There are some habits as a believer, it does not go with our work. It does not go. Language, the way you talk to people, your politeness, the way you hold your emotions, godly habits. Part of godly habits is what? Having prayer times, word study times. You must even invest in a library of good biblical books. And I can point you to some. Some are good, some are not good. Good ones. You must have a library. That's part of the godly habit. Library. You must have times that you decide to do what? Have your own times of with God. You can say once every month, once every three months, one Saturday or Sunday or whatever day, I will spend that whole day in God. What am I going to do? I'm going to pray. I'm going to speak in tongues a lot. Then after I'm going to study the Bible and I'm going to read one book or one, I'm going to listen to one recording from Pastor Fred, or one recording from Abel Damina, or one recording from Chris Unayinka, or one recording from Dr. Kenneth Hagin, or one book from Kenneth Hagin. That is part of godly habits. So when you get money, my, my, the major, and I'm, not, I'm just giving you an example. My first line of money is I always, if I show you my library or my Kindle, I have 336 books in my Kindle library. My notes, the ones I have here physically. I built a godly habit that my first financial investment to invest in my spiritual life first or the secondary. So when I started my master's, Kebodaya, I had a hard time because I was used, before I got born again, I loved reading novels. But when I got born again, my habit changed. You can read novels, fine but you must be conscious of God's habits. Because all these things will either add to your participation. See that? If you're a believer and your godly habit is watching more Nollywood movies, and I'm not knocking that because once in a while I watch them, but if I'm using the word more, it will begin to what? It will begin to chew or affect your fervency in Christ. I'm not against, you can watch it, yeah, we all watch it once in a while, but now it's like you, one Nollywood film after that, one Nollywood film after that, it will affect, but it is a script done by somebody. They are injecting, they are, they are educating you from afar. They did it in Nigeria and they projected it on Netflix and you are watching one after the other. Put on the brakes. It will affect 
You don't know why you are not interested. Or oh, believer, all your songs in your car are coupé de calais. Uh, you know what coupé de calais is? It's French for these kind of you know, songs that they play with the, with the Afrobeat. The content of the lyrics is nothing about Christ. Worldly lyric songs are full in your house. As a believer, you will prefer to play. When you are alone, you will play more of worldly lyric songs than believing songs. Something that would, what, would, what, would add to. That's what we are talking about, conscious. So you are constantly being conscious of those things. Then also we will learn about becoming conscious of our love work. Critical. There is no point in me having a pignosis, prayer, but my love walk towards another Christian, towards the unbeliever, is virtually non-existent. I cast, I insult people, I fight, I am I mean. You say, hey, this one, this is this one is work. Oh, this one is work. Then, then you then then, then there's an area then that love. I'll come to that when we get there. People, a lot of believers think that walking in love, that's why Hitler, Hitler wanted to do away with Christians because he said that the love work is it makes, makes men weak. Love is no weakness. Oh. Love is love is power under control. What does it mean? It's easier to get angry and to throw tantrums. Very easy. But love is, I, 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 I have the right to be angry. I have the right to respond. I have the right to explode. But by knowledge of the word, I hold myself. Now, that does not mean that if somebody is doing something, you will come into the details of that. You do not tell them, but the way you say it, see, you can make your, I always say this, you can make your points be heard without, without, being, without being impolite. No, no, I, impolite is not our nature. No, 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 no. You know, you just, you just, you are brash. You talk to anybody anyhow. No, 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 no. No, who are you portraying now? Did, did Jesus speak to anybody anyhow? There's a place to disagree to agree. That's fine. But make sure it does not end in negative. So we will be conscious of our love work. Then we become conscious of our giving to promote the kingdom of Christ. Now, giving has taken a very bad press. Bad press. Bad press among the body of Christ. It has taken a bad press. Of course, we give willingly, but that does not mean that because of that, our attitude in there will also slack. Because ultimately, it's Jesus that we, we, we project. So in spiritual growth season one, our emphasis was on what spiritual growth is and what is not. That's what we did in season one last year. We looked into or we delved into the importance of accurate knowledge regarding salvation of our human spirits and the need to get to grips with all its key facts outlined in the epistles. In season two of spiritual good, our emphasis will be or will, will revolve, it will, it will revolve around growing in our mind, because our mind is not born again, we don't, so we don't become loose in our thinking, growing in our attitude and our emotions in order to dominate our daily walk with the world. Some people are good with prayer, good with the word, good with church attendance, but in emotions, they are easily discouraged. See that? That is part of the growth. That means that area must grow. If, for example, 10 years ago, any little thing I am discouraged, any little thing I'm done, and it takes me um, three weeks to, to snap out of that, now in my maturity, even though discouragement might come, in my last, I like the way one sister said it, some time ago, she said that she, you know, now when she gets, you know, um, attacked or she gets down, maximum, it might last for a day or two. That's spiritual growth. See, but why is she saying, God, years ago, if she was down, it could last for weeks, months, she cannot function. But through the knowledge of God's word, at least she has matured. She has allowed the word to mature her in that area. So she's conscious of that area. See, that, that's what we are talking about. If Five years ago, six years ago, any little thing, you are angry and you start talking. Fine. We are all human. But after six years in accurate knowledge, are you still getting angry easily? See that? So it must change. 
So now, if I was quick to get angry, that must begin to reduce. Glory to God. So our emphasis here is now being conscious of our walk in Christ in various areas of our, our understanding. And those are the seven areas that I've just outlined of where we become conscious of in this, our outcomes. Prayer, evangelism, eternal rewards, church service activities, godly habits, love work, giving to promote the kingdom. The seven modules of spiritual good season two, which I continue tomorrow in Jesus name. Amen. Amen.